Cool. Okay, so um, before I get into scraper wiki, I kind of wanted to cover just some general things about um, guerrilla data liberation, open data and things as well. And hopefully that'll just stimulate some thoughts about what you want to hack on today. Um, you know, Matthew strongly suggested uh, hacking on a planning alert scraper, and that's great. But once you learn how to use scraper wiki, well then you can then use those skills to build other scrapers for all sorts of different things. So what's guerrilla data liberation? Um, the first thing I wanted to say is it's not the Google data liberation project. So it's not, we're not talking about your, your private data. This is publicly available data. So it's not about cracking into other people's systems or anything like that. This is data that's just out there on the web. Um, you've probably heard the term open data. And uh, you know that's normally about governments opening up data. Um, the guerrilla part of guerrilla data liberation is just us doing it for ourselves as well. So there's a place for citizens to go out and liberate their own data if they want to, in addition to you know what government's doing and things like that. And I mean, if you look at what data.gov.au is releasing, um, lately they've been doing all of these dry bank statistics. And I don't know about you, but I don't find that very interesting. Um, the thing about data liberation is well, it's also not just government data. You know, we've looked at the, the council data, cool, and that's kind of local council and everything like that. But what about all sorts of crazy things? What about, say, a TV guide? Or what about a, a, the ABC iView system? Now, someone did scrape this, um, a bloke named Jeremy Visser, and he created Python iView. So instead of being able to use the big fat flash application that ABC wants you to use, you can now use a nice light GTK you know, um, system on your computer, download all of these files so that you can watch them later or, or watch them when you're on the go. That's pretty cool. Um, and the, the essence of what we're doing here is, is real hacking. This is old school hacking. This is reverse engineering. So what we're doing is we're reverse engineering websites. We're, we're working out how the people that put this site together, you know, how they put it together and why they did it like that. So it's actually, it can be quite interesting. Um, why, why do we want to liberate data? So there's the obvious things of, you know, getting it out of, say, uh, out of government, say, but there's heaps of different reasons why you'd want to, you know, write a scraper or, or use scraper wiki. Um, you can move unstructured data to structured data. So something like an HTML table, you know, you know, us geeks kind of know that, yes, there's structure behind it, but what do most people use when they want to look at data? They think of, say, a spreadsheet and CSV. So you might be converting an HTML table to CSV. It could be as simple as that. Um, moving from closed formats to open formats. So I'm not just talking about proprietary versus open, but something unusable like a PDF to something usable like CSV. So if I see a table in, in a PDF file, that's kind of interesting, but what if it was in a CSV file? Even, even you know, your average office worker is going to know that they can fire that up into Excel or hopefully open Office Calc and make a nice little chart out of it, right? Um, also retaining history. So we kind of do that with planning alerts. Because we've, we're storing the, this database of all the development applications, um, we've got all of the history of all of the DAs that have been raised in a particular area, whereas most councils only put, you know, say, this month's planning alerts online. Um, we're, we can also move you know, static data to a dynamic API. So even if you've got, say, a CSV published somewhere, by using something like ScraperWiki, you can then turn it into a dynamic API. So you can build an application that talks to that without having to go off and scrape it. So when, when you put it in a CSV file into um, ScraperWiki, you've suddenly enabled, you've basically bolted on a really powerful API when, and you can pull out JSON or, or, or XML or whatever, or make an RSS feed out of it. Um, another reason why we might want to liberate data is for mashups or merging data from dis different sources. So that could be related or unrelated data. So I'm thinking of the scenario where there's different government um, departments and they wouldn't necessarily see the benefits of, of pulling their data together with another um, uh, department's data. You know, wh why would I want to do that? They're the, they're the enemy or, you know, the competition in government, right? Um, and with Scrape Wiki, you can do that as well. And you can, it's got an SQLite back data store, so you can start to, to relate data together, which can, you can um, then start to see some interesting correlations between the data, right? So how do you liberate data out on the web? So you go out and you visit you know, a web page. What are the different techniques? So we've talked about scraping, um, and that's the, one of the most common, and that's the one we're all you know, focused on today. But there are some other ways that you can liberate data. So you might get lucky, and you might find that, hey, they've already built an API. 
no, 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 that wasn't a joke. <laughs> there are some people that actually have APIs. Um, or you might find nice structured data, you know, something like XML. Oh, no, I said nice, but, you know, it, at least it's structured, and at least you can pull it into a data store or something like that. Um, then there's um, liberating data in the real world. Um, uh, Matthew talked about how we scan the register of members' interests. You know, that's quite technologically advanced, taking pictures of pages and then putting them online. At least it's liberating the data, right? We were the first to do it, and it's really important, and people have found it useful. Um, the other way is breaking the law, breaking the law, and like the bloke that uh, Matthew mentioned this morning that downloaded all of these academic papers that people had to pay for unless you had a license to them. So he set up a little uh, notebook in the closet in the uni and just let it, let it run downloading for about four days, I think it was, and then put them on BitTorrent and released it like that. But what we're focused on today is scraping. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, yes, and he got into a lot of trouble for it. So we don't want to do that. We're talking about public data today. So this is where Scraper Wiki comes in if we're talking about scraping, right? Um, what is Scraper Wiki? It's, so it's a web app, cloud-based if you like, that allows you to write scrapers in your browser. Um, it's a wiki, so everyone can see the code and the data um, that the, the scraper generates. Um, anyone can go and edit them, um, say fixing up a, a scraper that's broken or forking your scraper because they like the code in it or they found a website that's really similar that they want to then you know, use your code. So you know, even non-coders can start to go, hey, I, I could see how I could maybe just change the URL in the scraper and suddenly you've created your own scraper that's getting data. Um, it's obviously, it's open, so everyone gets access to the data and Scraper Wiki creates um, APIs that um, access the data, as I was saying before. What's so great about Scraper Wiki? It's browser-based, so you don't need to set up a local development environment. You don't need to worry about installing a programming language, um, installing libraries or utilities and things like that. Uh, you don't need a server to run it all on. You don't have to worry about cron jobs and scheduling cron jobs and remembering, you know, is it star, star, five, star? No, I can't remember how, how cron works. Scraper Wiki goes off and schedules that. Um, it can run off as often as once a day, or you can change the frequency you know, to two weeks or a month if your data is not being updated so often. Um, you don't have to do all the little maintenance. You know, as I was saying earlier, every sysadmin knows about cron spam. Cron runs, exceptions happen, you get all the spam with all of the stuff in it about some exception and crazy thing. Scraper Wiki creates a really nice email that says, this scraper broke, this is what happens, you, you can click here and go and fix it. Or as I said earlier, someone else can go and fix it, hopefully. Um, yeah, so someone can fix it and fork it. We already talked about that. ScraperWiki supports three different programming languages. So if you're familiar with Ruby, Python, or PHP, you can get started really quickly. There's also a bunch of excellent tutorials on there. So if you've never hacked before, you can go and find, in order of preference, of course, Ruby would be the one to go for, I say biasly. Um, no, there's heaps of uh, documentation there that'll teach you how to scrape if you've never scraped before. So this is the online code editor. Um, it also allows collaboration. You can see there's a, down the bottom here, there's some um, tabs and there's a chat tab. So this is all, uh, Scraper Wiki was built um, originally with the kind of idea of data journalism in mind. So the idea that uh, a journalist could start writing their own scraper, need a bit of help, call up their local hacker, and then actually work together in real time on a, on a scraper, chatting over instant messaging and things like that too. Once you've written that scraper and you've run it like I have there, it then allows you to store all the data in the data store, and this is what the preview of the data store looks like. As I said before, it's SQLite based, um, so you can have multiple tables. You can relate that data to, to um, each other, just like a proper um, relational database. Uh, on that screen, you can, as I said before, everyone knows what a CSV is, you just download a CSV. So that if I click download spreadsheet, I can then open it up straight away in Excel and start doing some interesting you know, charts and things like that. It also allows you to download the, um, the SQLite database directly there so you can use it on your local machine or, or run a server or whatever if you want to. Um, as I said earlier, there's an API. Which one? Right, yeah, that's a good one. Um, so, so every day um, at about 12, um, we've got uh, our, our existing set of parsers which are run on our server. 
Um, and then as part of that, it then sucks up this data by calling uh, the API, which is JSON. So we just call the API. That then gets pulled into planning alerts into the database. Does that answer the question? Uh, so the, uh, um, Matthew was talking about the naming of the fields, which is pretty important um, because we use that to determine you know, what's in what field. So there's you know, date, scrape, description, info URL that I can see up there. In the document that's the, that I've been telling people about in the Google Doc, there's a link to another doc about how to scrape, how to write scrapers for planning alerts. And in there, there's a bit of a almost API reference to what you need to name your fields and what kind of fields are, are possible. Because some councils have um, information on when you need to provide your submission, as, as Matthew was showing earlier. You know, you have 28 days to respond. That comes from information that the council provides. Not all councils provide that, and so there's some optional fields and some required fields. Any other questions? Um, yeah, so when you click on Explore with ScrapeWiki API, it, it shows you this page, which allows you to really easily, in your browser again, um, write a little query and get, in this case, some JSON out the bottom. And you can choose different formats here, like CSV or XML. Um, the other thing, apart from scrapers, that ScrapeWiki allows you to do is views. Now, I haven't played with these too much. And this is really where you can see the data journalism bent coming in, because what they want to do is create a one-stop shop for um, data journalism, where you can write the scraper, then write a view. And so views are representations of the data within Scraper, uh, Scraper Wiki. So it can hook into different scrapers. Like one single view can hook into many different scrapers and then present the, the, the data online. So that might be a graphic or an infographic kind of thing using maybe the Google Chart API, or in this case, using Google Maps. So this is a, a view that I wrote, which uses a scraper that I wrote, which scraped every single Australian post office. And then there's some latitude and longitude information in that data. I then use the Google Maps API to then show it on a Google map. So that's every single post office in Australia. Um, any other questions then? I think that's about it. Yep. OK, so the question was, once you've written the scraper, how do you then store it in the data store, basically, yeah? So ScraperWiki's got a bunch of um, you know, internal calls. And you can't see it quite here. It's just down the screen a little bit. Um, but I, th from, uh, I can't remember the call exactly, but it's in the Docker. It's something like Scrape in Ruby, it's. Uh, you don't need to. You want to what, sorry? Oh, you, uh, OK, the question was, I want to be able to run the script on my own machine. So what I do is, if, if I'm developing locally, which you know only geeks would do, because the whole idea of ScraperWiki is you don't need to you know, run it on your local machine. I, I, I agree. So uh, 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 <laughs> the complaint was that you have to type it on a web form. Um, so the way that I normally develop my scrapers is yes, locally. And I use um, Ruby's um, interactive interpreter, IRB because then it allows me to inspect the object really, really easily. So what I do is when I'm writing a scraper that I'm going to put on ScraperWiki, I store everything. Right at the bottom there, you can see there's a record, which is a hash of, the, of, of each record. And what I do when I'm developing locally is I just print that out. And then, then when I upload to ScraperWiki, I just comment out the printing out and, then, and uncomment the ScraperWiki saving code that I have there. Cool. Yeah. Any other questions? Cool. OK, so um, I kind of gave the offer before to, to pair up with someone, so I'm happy to do that as well and um, write some planning alert scrapers. Ah, where's the list of stuff that we want for planning alerts? Yeah. So in the Google Doc that I shared before, there's a couple of different places that you want to check out as far as other fields that that's in the so in that Google Doc there's a link to another Google Doc about how to write a scraper which is basically yeah it's got a little bit of a section on on what fields we want what fields are required and what fields are optional cool yeah so um, so which authorities to target so on the planning alerts website there's a list of all of the 
um, authorities that we support today. There's also a list of all the authorities that may have problems, which is any scraper that hasn't been returning data for a couple of weeks. So if you feel like fixing things, go on there. Um, there's also a list, there's an alerts statistics page, which shows us all of the scrapers that, um, that people have asked for implicitly by putting their address in. They're signed up, they're not getting alerts today, but they will as soon as um, you write a scraper for them. So it shows you the most popular um, scrapers, basically, or most popular scraper you could write. Um, and then we've also got a Google Doc, a spreadsheet, that tries to list, that we crowdsourced a list of all of the um, development, pla the planning authorities, rather, um, that has, say, links to the website, whether they've got their DAs online, whether they're in PDF format, all of that kind of thing. So that's worth checking out as well. Anything else? Great. Happy hacking. <laughs>